Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week, Prime Minister Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips and Minister within the Ministry of Public Works Honorable Diodat Indar have been updated on the construction of GPL's 46.5 megawatt dual fuel power plant located at the Garden of Eden Power Generation Complex. During the meeting held in the boardroom of the Prime Minister's office, both ministers were told the project will be completed by mid-year. PM Phillips later said there were some delays due to the COVID-19 restrictions and bad weather, but that the project will be completed by June 30 and will have a great impact on the reliability of electricity in the Demerara Burby's interconnected system. Several measures are being implemented at the Demerara Harbour Bridge to facilitate maintenance work following damage to the structural integrity of Span 9. Minister of Public Works Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel on Sunday engaged technical staff of the DHB and was updated on the emergency works going forward after a series of analyses were conducted. Every effort is being made to ensure that we could get vehicles crossing the bridge, supplies could move from the east to the west, west to the east, people could get to work, medical emergencies could be responded to, Security emergencies could be responded to. The minister said the usual number of daily retractions would be reduced. There are also plans to place traffic police at strategic points along the bridge with speed guns to monitor drivers' speed, while other methods are being sought to monitor river traffic. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Honorable Hugh Todd on Saturday last met and interacted with residents of Block 22, One Mile and Poker Street, Wismer, during an outreach to Region 10. During their interaction, Minister Todd noted that government has a plan to improve health care, education and other basic services for residents. We're here to look after you so that we can move you along the human development index so that you and those who will come after you in your family will be better off than you are today. And to do that, we have a government plan that we have rolled out. Minister Todd says government will place more emphasis on achieving universal secondary education, providing free university education, and providing 20,000 online scholarships for citizens within the next five years. Students within Linden would not have to travel all the way to Torquay to, face, to have a face-to-face -face education at the university. You can do it right here in Linden and earn a solid and good degree that will allow you to have a good future. Minister Todd also distributed 100 hampers to senior citizens and other vulnerable persons in the communities. The consignment of 24,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine obtained through COVAX arrived on Monday morning at the Chedi Jagan International Airport. This is the first batch of vaccines Guyana is set to receive through the facility. Advisor to the Minister of Health, Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, said this consignment will boost the country's COVID-19 immunization campaign. We are demonstrating that we are Guyana strong and we are on the road to ensuring that all persons resident within our borders are vaccinated in 2021. Meanwhile, persons began accessing the 24,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine during the past week. Minister Anthony at Tuesday's COVID-19 update expressed optimism that the vaccination process will continue to be a smooth one. So we are very uh, excited, we are very pleased that um, the process has started and this was the first set of doses that we are receiving from the COVAX mechanism. And we have been told that over the next couple of months that the other doses uh, would be coming in as more doses become available to the COVAX mechanism. Minister Anthony has disclosed that two private facilities are now authorized to do the polymerase chain reaction PCR test. During Tuesday's COVID-19 update, Minister Anthony told DPI that the two facilities are Coastal Diagnostics and Sheriff Medical Laboratory. So right now for PCR testing, uh, we have four uh, authorized laboratories. The first one being the National Public Health Reference Lab, which is run by the Ministry of Health. The second one will be Eureka uh, Medical Laboratories, and they have been doing uh, PCR testing. The third 
has been coastal diagnostics, which has been granted a provisional uh, license, and the fourth uh, has been uh, Sheriff uh, Medical Laboratories, which have been granted a provisional license. Minister Anthony says the full license would be granted once all the criteria for PCR testing is met. Both of them have been given provisional license because we tend to assess um, on a regular basis until we are comfortable and then we make sure they'll be granted a full license once they comply with all the things that we require. Manufacturers and importers are assured of hassle-free trade as the government makes every effort to address the challenges encountered in importing goods to Guyana. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Honorable Mohabir Anil Nandlal and Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce, Honorable Onij Walran, on Tuesday engaged the stakeholders at the Arthur Chung Conference Center. The consultation sought to address the prolonged issue of certification required by the Food and Drug Department before goods imported into Guyana from Florida are deemed acceptable. Unfortunately, our Food and Drugs Department has difficulties with that process. They feel that uh, the quality control is not there with the Florida Enterprise, that if there is no warranty of the suitability of the goods uh, certified by that agency for export. And as a result, they have not been accepting uh, goods certified by that agency for importation into Guyana. The Attorney General says the process has led to recurring problems. However, a compromise has been met where goods that have an authorized distributorship in Guyana will continue to be imported only by those authorized distributors. In addition, the Federal Department certificate will be required. The proposed decision will be taken to Cabinet for approval before it is implemented. Minister Walron says government is keen on resolving the matter in its continued bid to enhance the business sector. On Tuesday, Minister of Amerindian Affairs, Honorable Pauline Sukai, pledged to have the finances of several villages audited due to concerns of financial impropriety. The minister made this announcement during a community consultation with residents in Barameta Region 1. Many villages who have not supplied us with, with a financial um, update, we have selected a few based on complaints for special audits. Further, Minister Sukai explained that some villages, including Barameta, have contravened the Amerindian Act 2006 in relation to the production of financial statements. By law, the village council has a duty to, support, to supply the financial report to the minister. Um, 2020 has, has left us. It's, we, we're now into 2021. And I have not seen a financial report from the village of Barmita. So I will urge that the village council put their records in order and supply to the minister a financial status of the village. Residents of Good Fortune Region 3 can expect potable water by the end of June. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Honorable Suzanne Rodrigues, made this commitment during her follow-up visit to the community on Wednesday. Last December, the minister visited the area and pledged to remedy the poor water quality in the community. This situation has been existing and ongoing for a very, very long time. And I said to you at that meeting that we will conduct a study to to see the feasibility of Good Fortune receiving treated water from the Pordroin water treatment plant. I'm here to announce today that that feasibility study has been completed and according to our analysis, Good Fortune can receive um, the treated water for the very first time. Yay. Minister Rodriguez also awarded a $7.4 million contract for the construction of walkways and concrete drainage structures at the Good Fortune squatting area. Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Honorable Nigel Darmlal, has committed to boosting Pigeon Island's infrastructure and economic development. The minister made this pledge on Tuesday during a meeting in the community. We believe that we can play an instrumental role these groups are supposed to be the bridge between the government and the people. The best way for us to have community development is to build trust with people. And trust can be built by us staying away from you. And trust can be built without you understanding how we operate and without us knowing what your issues are. 
The Ministry of Housing and Water's Central Housing and Planning Authority will be allocating 700 house lots to residents on the Essequibo coast this month. Minister Honourable Colin Kroll made this announcement during an outreach to Pomeroon Supernam Region 2 on Wednesday. What I can announce to you today is that on the next month, April 16th and 17th, we will be back in this region, and that is to make allocations for 350 new allottees in here for a phase four in on the naming, as well as for a new charity housing scheme, another 350. The minister assured residents that the backlog in processing house lot applications will be addressed this year. Additionally, in the latter part of 2021, half a billion dollars would be invested to start infrastructural works to ensure the areas are accessible. Minister Kroll also committed to improving water quality across the country. Currently, only 52% of Guyana has access to treated water, but this, Minister Kroll said, will change over the next five years, with the government aiming for 90% treated water. Government is making good on its promise to resolve the issues surrounding the delayed Leg 1 Stelling project. On Wednesday, during a presidential outreach, Minister of Public Works, Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel announced the government's decision to source a new contractor. As of yesterday afternoon, we are going back out to tender to get a new contractor engaged because we are seeking to put together what is done and what needs to be done so we can have a smooth transition. The stelling is not going to be abandoned. I want to make that very clear. This is a high priority for our government and we're going to get that stelling fixed. As it relates to roadworks to be done in Leguan and throughout the country, Minister Edgel says his ministry is currently examining all roads and ranking them according to priorities. Leg 1 is also set to benefit from community enhancement works to be executed by a new group under the Community Organized for the Restoration of the Environment, CORE program. The CORE group will be engaged and employed this week for a period of one year. Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce, Honorable Onidge Walron, says the export of scrap metal will resume on April 8. The minister made this announcement on Thursday during an engagement with scrap metal dealers at the Arthur Chong Conference Center. We want to facilitate your, your trade. We want to uh, create an enabling environment for economic activity to resume, especially in this, in, uh, in this sector. And we have called upon the GRA, the Home Affairs, and uh, KANU to assist us with, the, with this process because security is such a large portion of the trade. Minister Walron explained that the delay in reopening the trade was to facilitate the fine-tuning of the scanning unit. An internal unit was set up at the ministry along with an external multi-stakeholder unit. I must let you know that we took uh, this long to get this unit, um, to get it, get it, try to get it right, to make sure that we fill as many gaps that we saw um, existed in the previous um, operations of the trade. And the, we believe this is a work in progress. Minister of Labour, Honorable Joseph Hamilton, says there are no sacred cows when it comes to Guyana's labour laws, as every organisation, whether public or private, must honour the occupational safety and health rules. Minister Hamilton made a statement during the launch of Occupational Safety and Health Month on Thursday. As I continue this journey, there is no sacred cow. The law is for everyone. And since I came here, I've instructed the officers, both OSH officers and labor officers, that the same way how you robustly can go up by GTNT and speak to them about infringement, you must go down the road to GGMC and the Ministry of Health and wherever. Minister Hamilton says the work to address occupational safety and health will be continuous as his ministry moves to make it a national issue. We are aiming for zero workplace accidents. That, that is our aim, this ministry. And we hope that you give us the support that we need. Many of the leaders of organizations that are sitting here in businesses, 
They have already been supporting and have pledged support to us. Director General of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Vishwa Mahadio, says a resident doctor has now been installed at the Shulinab Health Center to serve the mixed Makushi and Wapichan Region 9 community. Dr. Mahadio made this announcement during a two-day outreach to Region 9 recently. It is the first time that this facility is going to have a doctor. And so this is also based on the request when we visited the last time of the staff and some residents requesting more services and better services. It's to take health care to the people and not for the people to come to you. Take it as much as possible, as far as possible to the people. Dr. Mahadio commended Dr. Petriana Serge Paul for taking up the mantle to serve in the remote region. Dr. Serge Paul was recently assigned to the satellite community after serving at Sand Creek and surrounding villages. 25,000 doses of the Sputnik V vaccine from Russia arrived on Friday at the Chedi Jagan International Airport on board a charter flight. This is the first batch of the Sputnik vaccine to arrive out of the 200,000 doses the government purchased. Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony, says these doses will be used soon. We are very pleased and excited that the first batch of the Sputnik V is here. Uh, we have just received 25,000 doses and um, we'll start utilizing this as early as next week. As you know, this vaccine, it's a two-dose vaccine as well, and we'll have an interval of three weeks uh, between first and second dose. So the 25,000 that came in are all the first dose, and so we have made arrangements as well to start getting the second dose. Minister Anthony says the government is still exploring other avenues to procure more vaccines. We have various options right now, apart from the, the Sputnik V that we have bought, um, we have also the additional vaccines that we are expected to get from COVAX and we are constantly exploring new avenues to make sure that we will have enough vaccines to immunize our adult population. The Sputnik V is the first registered COVID-19 vaccine. The health minister is urging the public to get vaccinated so the nation could achieve herd immunity. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well.